One of the great things about laser engraving is you can engrave your own images onto items, but with the new Xtool Studio, you might not know how to do that. It's changed a little bit since Xtool Creative Space. So in this tutorial today, I'm gonna to show you where it's located, how to now import your images into Xtool Studio, how to adjust them, how to edit them, how to crop them, how to do a full range of editing so that you can get the maximum thing out of your image when you're engraving. So let's get straight on to the tutorial. So we are back onto our familiar page, Xtool Studio. And as you can see right here, we know what to do at this point. We are gonna click new project and that's gonna take us straight to our initial default. Mine was the F1 Ultra that I had open last time. So it's opened on the F1 Ultra. And in this case, that is exactly what we'll be doing. So just to make the screen a bit more interesting to look at, I am going to refresh the camera so that you've got something other than a white background. There we go, and there's a nice bit of debris on there. <laughs> okay, so this aim of this lesson is to show you one, number one, how to import an image into Xtool Creative Space, and I'll show you that. Number two, how to modify that image, and number three, how to edit that image. So very similar things, but the difference between the modification and the editing is, what I mean by modifying is you might wanna make it black and white, you might wanna increase the sharpness, what I mean by editing it is you might wanna remove the background, you might wanna trace around it, those kind of things. And I'm gonna take you through all of that in this lesson. So in the previous lesson, we learned various different things. This one, they all feed into each other. So be sure to check those previous lessons out if you haven't seen them yet. And also subscribe to the channel. So without further ado, let's crack on. So over here on the left, you will see a plus symbol. That is the import icon and that is how you import an image. So Click on that first, it's gonna bring up your normal window here. And I have got a nice image ready to go. This is something new that has been brought in with Xtool Studio and it now asks you if you wanna to scale to fit or keep your image the original size. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do both for you just so you, can, just so you know what will happen. So first of all, I'll do no keep original size. There you go, we've got a massive image of a man putting his thumbs up. I'll delete it, I'll click the plus symbol again. I'll get the same picture and this time I will click scale to fit. And as, as you'd expect, it has now fitted it to the whole workspace. So first thing you wanna do with an image is resize it and you can do that in two ways. You can either adjust it by these little handles on the corner, as I'm seeing there, or up here on the toolbar at the top, you can manually change it. So for example, 150 millimeters will scale it up. If you wanna adjust it, out of the aspect ratio it's locked to, click that button there, and then you are welcome to do whatever you want with it. In this case, obviously we wouldn't be doing that, but it's an option for other types of images. If you would like to rotate the image, there is a rotate button just here. If you hold, click and hold and rotate, or the other option is up here again, click in that angled area and type in your amount. So this image, I would like to crop it. I would like to make it smaller so that I can when I frame it, and you can see framing in one of our other videos if you're not sure what that is. But when I frame it, I want it to actually ref reflect the outline of the image or the extent of the image. So what we do, on Xtool Creative Space, it was quite obvious on the top toolbar how to adjust an image, but now it's not so clear. However, there is an edit button right there. So first thing you wanna do is select your image and then select the edit button, and now you're gonna see a number, of tool, or a number of tools on the left. A lot of these are new and being implemented. Other ones are slightly repackaged to look a bit more jazzy, but they're, they're there and we will go through them in a minute. But the first thing we are interested in is the adjustments tab. This is gonna bring back the familiar things that you would have seen in the previous software, or if you're new to this, this is what you're gonna do to be able to actually modify this image. So click on adjustments and you're gonna see sharpness, saturation, brightness, contrast, temperature, tint, invert, and grayscale. There is a new feature that has actually been brought in here called auto adjust. So we're gonna try that first, and as it says, it's gonna auto adjust the image to what it deems as a suitable image for whatever we're doing. What I will say is we actually don't have a material selected yet, so I will quickly select one, and yesterday we did pine wood, so I'm just gonna pick that just because it's there. So now when we go back into edit image and we do that by clicking on the image, clicking edit, and then going to adjustments, 
If we click auto adjust, it's going to adjust it to best engrave onto wood. And there you go, that, that's auto adjust. You can reset what you've done here by clicking this little button here and we'll do that. So what other options do you have? You have sharpness and as you, as you see there, you can adjust the slider. You've got all the other ones. One thing you might want to do if you're engraving onto a dark material is invert the image. And there is a tick box to do that. That's where it basically inverts the color. So if you're engraving onto a dark material, what would normally have been a light color on a light material will be opposite on a dark material. So it means that your picture won't look back to front like a negative photo. It will engrave basically the opposite to what you're seeing on the screen right there. You can also select grayscale. So this is a good one because if you're ever engraving photos onto things, from my experience, I feel you get a better engraving if you engrave a black and white or a grayscale photo over a color photo. You may have different experiences there, but for me personally, I always make a picture black and white before I engrave it. So there you go. There's our initial kind of fine tuning of an image. Now, you might wonder, how do I crop an image? Well, <laughs> there is a box there that says crop image. There's our answer. However, it's not so simple when you go into there because you're presented with all of these crop ratios. You might have a specific ratio. You might want to go onto a, a, a square slate coaster. So a one-to-one -one ratio would be your option there. You might have something else. You know, you've got all these defined ones, but what I like to do is the random setting and then you can manually grab the handles and drag it up and frame it wherever you want. Then click save in the bottom right hand corner and you've got your cropped image which is always handy. We'll move on to AI cutout next. So as you can see here, AI cutout is basically, you can see it action there. It's giving you the option to remove the background for you. You can adjust various things. But what I will say, if you look to the bottom right down here, it will use your credits to do this. So bear that in mind. You can, and this is from me to you because I'm not trying to sell stuff on behalf of Xtool. I'm trying to give you the best advice here. What I would do is I would put it into a Google search bar, type in background remover, and there's lots of free ones out there. I would remove a background of an image on one of those bits of software. If you're not sure what one to use, feel free to ask in the comments and I can let you know. There is also a manual cutout tool and this one doesn't use credits, but as you can imagine, it's a lot more effort. Well, I say that it worked quite well there, but you'll see it does chop out areas and there is a back key up here, so it might chop out more than you want. So this one's gonna make you work for it a bit more, but it is still possible to achieve the same thing as I just demonstrated with the AI cutout. And you can click confirm, and there you go, look, we've got it. And that cost us no credits. So that's within crop, uh, AI cutout. There is an AI expand feature where you can type in, I'm gonna type in a field of flowers in the background click generate, it's gonna use six of my credits. And in theory, it should expand the space around that image with what I've asked for there. There you go. So it's added a field of background onto it. It also seems to have added in the white background again. So that's a bit of a flaw there. You know, It's added a, a field of flowers in the background, but it's got rid of the smart crop that I did. So there you go, there's that feature. Let's move on. So I'm gonna cancel it. Let's move on to Magic Eraser. And this is another thing where you can retain or remove bits and you get a brush size and you can basically chop it out and use credits again to remove stuff. So I'll, I'll generate it just so you can see what it does in this case. We'll use my credits for this, why not? So <laughs> that hasn't acted like I expected it to. It seems to have put a black background, done nothing to the forehead that I did and cost me some credits. I'll cancel that. Um, I think I get my credits back actually when you cancel it, which is nice. Uh, there is also the magic edit. Let's see what this one does. So enter the description of the selected area to edit, such as change the color of the hair. Okay, so I'll tell you what, let's try that. Let's, let's just run, rush around his hair and I'm gonna type change hair color to ginger. And let's see what happens there, shall we? And look at that, amazing results again. We have got a black background. So once again, that isn't working very well. Maybe it's because I've cropped the image out already, who knows? So there is also an AI enhance where in theory it's gonna increase the, the clarity of the picture. I will try and do it here so we can see what it does. 
And there you go. To be fair, that actually does look better than it did. I mean, it, it has obviously um, AI generated aspects of it, but that's a lot clearer. That 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 worked quite nicely. Uh, we'll go back in, and then finally, there's a, the old trace command, which if you use the software before, you'll probably remember it. This one is free, and you can do an auto trace as it's done there, and you can adjust the various thresholds, and these will allow you to. Um, try and kind of nail down the trace of an image a bit more, um, you know, a bit more refined to what you want. You've got fuzziness, threshold, smoothness, denoising, 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 and all of those things. So look, we've got close to getting a whole cut out of it. So you can do that if you want as well. That Those are the tools that you can use within the software. There are also built-in filters, as you can see, and we'll run through them in a basic manner. We've got uh, original, grid, sketch, comic, embossment, black and white, and halftone. There you go, there are our filters. I'm gonna go back to original. And then finally, they have added something called Restyle, and it looks like it will basically take your image, and based on the art you wanna do, it's gonna regenerate it. It's gonna restyle it for you, as the name says. I've gone for line art. Let's see what it does. I'll be interested to see how well this comes out. And there you have it. It has produced an image in line format as it promised. So there we go. I'm gonna go control Z there. Those are the key ways of editing an image. And as you can see, there is quite a lot of flexibility there. The old worthy, what the old trusty ones are still there and there is an option to do it. What I will say is a lot of these new features that um, Xtool are bringing in do use credits. So bear that in mind. If you've enjoyed the content and you wanna follow for the next one, the next video will be material settings. So if you want to know how to make your own material settings to get the perfect settings on any material, watch that video. If you've got something out of this, please subscribe to the channel. Please like and please comment because I love hearing from you guys. Have a great day and thank you for watching.